On today's episode, how this French airplane changed everything. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. In the aerospace industry, there was never a time quite like the 1950s. The Cold War was in full swing and the turbojet engine had matured to the point where it was revolutionizing aircraft design. Simultaneously, large liquid-fueled rockets were becoming reliable enough to kickstart a major missile industry, especially as atomic weapons became small and light enough to be carried over medium and intercontinental ranges. In the lucrative military aircraft market, it looked like the world was bifurcated. Nations could choose to either buy U.S. equipment and become a de facto U.S. ally, or buy Soviet airframes as part of a greater communist bloc. In many cases, arms purchases were heavily subsidized by Russia and the United States, and as smaller countries rushed to modernize their air forces with jet aircraft, the need for complex and expensive training and MRO systems to support those airframes became paramount. But what if your nation was small or mid-sized and simply didn't want to be locked into reliance on a major superpower to keep your air force flying? Well, that usually meant reliance on low-technology, low-performance aircraft until this, the Mirage 3. This masterpiece of an aircraft built by Dassault in France was an engineering triumph, but a political masterstroke as well. Technically, the aircraft was outstanding. The airframe was light and simple, yet offered supersonic performance at a time when faster-than-sound flight was the hallmark of a modern air force. Simplicity was, and is, critical for smaller air forces where airframe availability is crucial to the maintenance of a credible deterrent. But what about that MRO and support infrastructure? The Mirage 3's Attar turbojet engine was also French-made, as was the Thompson radar and the aircraft's missile and gun armament. The result of this project was that France became a go-to supplier for advanced combat aircraft on a cash-and-carry basis, without the need for larger political and economic entanglements with the superpower. For those that prefer British or American avionics and weapons, they could be fitted. Sophisticated derivatives were offered, but the Mirage 3 was flown by France, Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Spain, Israel, Lebanon, Pakistan, South Africa, Switzerland, and Venezuela. Some are still in service today in Pakistan. So it was a great aircraft, yes, but more importantly, it offered the French government incredible political leverage. The ability to establish economic ties with non-aligned nations worldwide, offering those countries state-of-the-art military aircraft without the need to risk politically disadvantageous trade terms with the superpower. It also offered the French another benefit. It demonstrated that France was capable of producing high-technology airframes, power plants, and avionics on a par with much larger nations. And the long-term result of this national strategy has been that France is the production hub for Airbus and still manufactures advanced military airframes today. No other advanced European nation enjoyed this level of success, despite considerable technical capability. The French cracked the code early, a code which still applies today in critical industries such as aerospace, automotive, and energy. So what form will the next Mirage 3-type project take? Small modular nuclear reactors? Advanced general purpose robotics? Electric vehicles? Flying taxis? Well, it's hard to say, but I expect that whatever the next big thing is, it's not going to emerge from market forces alone. At some point, some nation somewhere is going to use a focused national strategy for these transformative technological programs. And someone's going to win. And the French will be very much in the match. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.